الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. As they call Ramadan, I say Ramadan is madrasa, is a school by itself. If you enter that month at the end of it, by the will of Allah, if you take the means like when someone is really concerned about the school, he'll pass. He'll uh, transform himself to something else. This is the way with the month of Ramadan. That's by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it is not just an obligation to fast, but it's a great opportunity that a person is taken by the obligation to be among the muttaqeen, to be among the righteous ones, to transform oneself, to be according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. And we see that uh, the ibadah that we're all uh, experiencing at this moment is al-mujahada, that you are struggling, you're striving with yourself. It doesn't have to be a very strong one, but it's easy, alhamdulillah, that if it's up to you, you would go drink coffee or eat uh, nice food or whatever, but you're controlling yourself, you're having the patience, and you are abstaining from your desire only for the sake of Allah. Not for any worldly benefit, only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the provider subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that is in no need of this ibadah, we are in need of it. But there's something very uh, interesting for us to pay attention to, that there's no command order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran or in the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, unless of course it's perfect, it's the most virtue, it's such a beautiful thing. But at the same time, you would find that you have to have some form of a struggle with it. Because this is how human beings are. So you have to overcome your nafs, yourself, and your desires. You have to have patience to fulfill the commands of Allah that you already know that it's so beautiful. So it's not something that a person is working on himself to do something that he hates, for example. No, uh, we all hate, for example, uh, lies or lying. Everybody hates lying. Even the worst liar, if he would say, if he would say, he would say in principle, lying is such an evil thing, right? But uh, for a person to be truthful, he has to work on himself to stay away from lying. So he has to have this mujahada of oneself. So, so the mujahada is not always to uh, to do something that you dislike. It's the nafs, the way that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created the human nafs, the human being, that you have to struggle with it to do what is good and what is right. And pay attention, for example, when you're listening to the Qur'an, reading the Qur'an, see the commands of Allah, even eating and drinking. Everybody likes to eat and drink. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to eat and drink in the Qur'an, it is not just eat and drink. Everybody eats and drink. But kulu ashrabu wa la tusrifu. Eat and drink and do not tusrifu. Do not make israf. Do not be excessive. So it is not the command to eat and drink because it's in every human being. They will eat and drink. But the command is so therefore, if uh, you find uh, an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, like for example, to make the salah, establish the salah, it is not in the norm of the human being that they would make salah. They need to learn, of course, from the messenger of Allah how to make salah. The worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any person that has pure fitrah is a beautiful thing. Imagine yourself the whole day and the whole night worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Nothing more beautiful than this, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, standing in the salah. The Prophet والسلام, would stand till his uh, feet والسلام, would swell. And he would say والسلام, when he was asked, abadan shakura. Shouldn't I be a grateful slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected the heart of the Prophet والسلام, that the comfort of his eye is the ibadah, is the salah. وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصلاة. It has been made for me the, the jewel, the comfort of my eye in the salah. When you think of it, it's the most beautiful thing. But why is it when a person, for example, makes salah, he, it's difficult for him. He can't wait till the imam goes for rukur, right? And he's going with patience with it. Because this is how the nafs is. We did not wean ourselves. And, and, and this is also by itself is a rewardable act. So you see the reality of yourself Versus what is beautiful and, and that what you want to do it, but you see how weak the nafs is. So a great opportunity to work on ourselves like this and look at all the commands of Allah. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say to the parents, right, take care of your children. Like for the mother, take care of a child when he's born, 
cover him when he sleeps, things like this. It's, a, it's already everybody does this, unless people are corrupted or sick or something like this. But then the, it's, it's the opposite way. Be kind and righteous to your parents because you need mujahada to do it. And whoever tells you that if he's an adult and he finds Biril Walidin to be such an ease that he is just, it's like breathing the air for him, he's wrong. You have to work on yourself. Not the same as for a mother and a father to their child. They don't have to work so hard to love their children, to care for their children especially when they're newly born and so on. But when someone grows up and he's mukallaf, he's responsible for his actions, it is not the same way. That's why the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be kind to the parents. So this is also a way to see how perfect is the deen of Islam. The commands of Allah, all of it is for what you need to work on yourself to establish that command of Allah. That's why when the ulama, they say, as-sabr, which is the half of the deen is sabr is three types, as-sabr ala at ta'a to have sabr, to have patience, to be obedient to Allah. If you think that the deen will come when you're just having so much enjoyment and things like this, it's never going to come. And that's why many people, they turn away from the deen because they're not willing to put that patience in themselves and to work on themselves to make that mujahada against oneself. And the sabr away from sins. Why sins? We are forbidden from it because it's evil and you would find all kinds of things pulling you towards it. The uh, deceiving of the, the, the deception of the shaitan, the nafs calling you. And you know that it's evil, but you still want to do it. And this is how the complexity of one's nafs is. So uh, to, say, to have sabr away from the sins and to have the sabr with the qadr of Allah. So when we know how complex we are, leave the matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely. Don't try to fix yourself. Right? Leave the matter to Allah. And this is the opportunity. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to fast, you don't ask why Fajr to Maghrib, why this time to this time, how it's supposed to be like this. It's leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Submit yourself to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa nafsi wa ma sawah. He's the one that created this nafs and he's the one that fashioned it in, in such a way. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that guides it and he's the one that leads it astray according to also the nafs. We do not know ourselves even. And this is a, such a big lie that human beings, they think that they know themselves. And they're so arrogant to say, I know myself very well. You don't know anything about yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know ourselves. And that's why when someone says this, when he's not obedient to Allah. By being obedient to Allah, you would find things. You don't have the knowledge whether this is going to fix you or not. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So that's why this Al-Islam and submitting oneself to the commands of Allah with fasting and perfecting it. Stand in the Salah when you don't feel like standing in the Salah. We're not talking about someone that is physically sick or is going to kill himself. We're, not talk we're talking about the normal situation. You're standing in the Salah and you can't stand. You're so bored. You're so normally just want to, you know, to make rukur. Be patient. It's okay. Right? And think of this, that this is, this is how when you put a medicine on, on a wound, it hurts, but it's the part of the healing, the healing process that we need to have for our own self. And, and think of how the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, they endured this patience and the joy that they had in their, in their hearts carried them and they made them enjoy the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same thing with being kind to the parents, being kind to the wife, you know, being kind to others. خيركم, خيركم لأهلي, it's not going to be something enjoyable for you. Just endure patience because you know that this is what is right. Once you know that something is correct, just be patient with it and remember the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the struggle is, no, is not going to end. It ends by the last moment of one's life. So everything that he's going to work on himself for some times and then after that, that's it. He's wrong. He will go from one thing to the other. As one of the early generations of Islam, he said, I worked on my nafs 20 years to make Qiyam al-Layl. And he says, And I enjoyed the next 20 years. Yes, this is how the nafs works. He did not enjoy it after, except after 20 years. Enjoyment meaning there's enjoyment with sabr. He's seeking reward. Some Allah. He's not going after the enjoyment of it in this world. He's seeking reward. Some Allah. But his nafs become easy for him by submitting to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to a philosophy or to ways where people will punish themselves. 
by just following the way of the Prophet والسلام, and being obedient to Allah, being kind to others. You're greedy, you're ordered to give. You feed others, you humble yourself, you, you eat with others. All of these types of things to work on and against ourselves, this enemy within, but with the commands of Allah so that a person would reach the final destination with peace. And as a rule, no nafs will enter Jannah unless it's tayyibah and pure. So this is the work to be done so that the person would enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some people, the only thing that would pure it is the hellfire because they didn't work on themselves to transfer the, transform the, the, themselves to be obedient to Allah and to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.